Hello and welcome to this next video on mobile repairing. In some of the earlier videos, we tried understanding the different chip components which are placed on a PCB. In this video, we will try and understand how we can do the reballing of an IC onto a mobile PCB. Now, in order to do that, first of all, we need to understand what is reballing. Reballing is a, a method by which we can place an IC onto a mobile circuit board or a PCB. Many a times the IC components may not function properly. This could be because the soldering joints underneath that may probably not be proper. In those cases, we will need to do reballing. Now, let us understand the two types of ICs first of all before we start reballing. This IC is called a lead IC and we have seen this IC in some of the earlier videos. This is called a lead IC because there are leads on both the sides or pins on both the sides which are usually soldered on to the PCB on both the sides. Sometimes there are also ICs, lead ICs which have pins on all the four sides. Sometimes they have it on two sides and sometimes on one side. Depending on the uh, IC, you need to use the soldering iron to actually um, place the IC onto a mobile PCB. You can use a micro soldering iron in these in the, if the IC is really small and these ICs can also be removed using the hot air gun or SMD. These ICs are very easy to place on the board because it just requires a micro soldering iron to solder it on the sides and you can use the hot air gun or SMD to remove it from the mobile PC. However, in order to do this, you will need to practice a lot before you can do it very clearly. The reason why we say this is uh, done better by practice is because the tips of these ICs are very minute as you can see in front of the screen. These leads are very minute and therefore, you need to be very careful when you are soldering them onto the PCB. These leads should not touch each other, otherwise it can result in a short circuit in the IC. So, you need to ensure that you solder it appropriately with the highest level of focus on ensuring that each lead is uniquely soldered onto the PCB. And that is why you need a lot of practice to place these kind of ICs. The other type of ICs are called the ball ICs. Ball ICs as we have seen in one of the earlier videos typically have small balls or circular tips which are placed at the bottom of the IC. So, this front portion of the IC, if you turn it around, you will be able to clearly see the balls there. These ICs do not have any pins on the side and as you can see now, the small minute balls are very clearly visible. These are the points which are actually touching the PCB and thereby the entire communication that happens on the IC happen through these small connecting tips. Now, many a times these connecting tips may disappear due to continuous usage or may not have been uh, placed properly. Sometimes they can even break if the mobile falls or is handled inappropriately. So, in order to replace these ICs, you need to do a process called reballing through which you can replace these balls at the back. To do the reballing, you will need a BGA kit, it is called a ball grid array kit. So, ball grid array essentially because these are small balls which are placed in the form of a grid in an array and that is why it is called a ball grid array or a BGA kit. And this BGA kit comes with one base plate which is what you see in front of you. The base plate is where we place the ICs, there are specific uh, shapes which are given for each of these ICs depending on the size of the IC. So, depending on which IC you need to reball, you can pick up the right IC and place it at its right mold. And once you place it in the right mold, the IC will fit in appropriately there and you can do the reballing process. For example, let us try out one IC and see where this places. Now, if you see, each IC will have very specific positions where you can place them. For example, this IC can be placed only in this position and this is exactly the position where it will fit in tightly. Once you place the IC in the base plate, 
you can then use the reballing process to recreate the ball grid array that you will see on or that we saw on the back side of the ICs. Now, in order to create these ball grid arrays, you will need specific outlines for each of these. These are all called BGA plates. BGA plates are nothing but uh, a metal plate which has holes in specific patterns. These holes or these uh, patterned holes are similar to what you would need to create at the back of the IC. So, for the respective IC, you will need to identify which pattern works well and works appropriately and then you need to use that pattern to be able to create the reballs or create the uh, BGA back on the ICs. Whenever you pick up a BGA kit from the market, you normally get some standard plates such as these. These standard plates will have the designs for most of the common ICs which are placed in mobile phones. But as you keep practicing, if you get more mobile phones for whose, uh, for, uh, for which you may not have the designs, you can always buy those designs independently in the market. So, these are different types of plates with very different designs depending on which IC and what type of BGA or ball grid array that you need to create at the back of the IC. Apart from these tools, we will also need a paste. This is a different kind of paste. This is not what we use for soldering uh, or this is not flux. This is called a reballing paste, which is very different, looks very different. And this is the paste that we will need to use while we are doing reballing. We should not touch the uh, other types of paste that we saw in earlier videos such as the flux. They can uh, create uh, problems on the IC and in the entire reballing process. So, you need to ensure that you use the right reballing paste and this is also available as part of the BGA kit. So, when you buy a BGA kit, you will always get a reballing paste along with the BGA kit as well. There is another paste that we will be using which is called as the soldering paste. Soldering paste is what creates those, creates those tips on the IC. So, the as you can see, this is the soldering paste and these are the soldering uh, tips. These, these are, this is the paste that creates the soldering tips on the back of the IC. And you will learn how we use this uh, soldering paste in the next video. So, these are pastes that you will need to use while you are working on reballing. You may need, apart from that, you may need the thinner and a stone which can be used for cleaning the tip of the soldering iron. Apart from that, the SMD is another tool that we will be using to create those points on the mobile PCB. Apart from these, from a tools perspective, there are two small tools that you can see. First one is a cutter. So, when we are making an IC or when we are making the points on the IC, sometimes there could be overlap of the solder points, you can use this small knife to ensure that the soldering is kept intact and there is no connectivity between two or three different points when you are making them on the back of an IC. The other tool on the left hand side that you see is essentially used to apply the paste onto the um, revolving plate or the IC. So, whenever we uh, have a mobile which has come to us for repair, you will try and identify the fault with the components that we saw earlier. Most of these components are uh, easily removable and replaceable such as the headpiece, the speaker, the ringer, the mic or any of these aspects. Whenever we are, those are, whenever the problem is not with any of those components, you may need to go deeper to try and trace the circuitry in the entire mobile device. And when you are checking the circuitry, you may come across smaller components where there could be problems. Sometimes, while you are tracing this, you may eventually find out that the problem is with a particular IC and that the IC is not functioning properly. You may need to do the reballing process. It could also be doubtful for you in that process because sometimes the IC may not be touching properly. So, even in the case of doubt, you can try and use this whole process of reballing to remove the IC from the board. Once you remove the board, uh, the IC from the board, you can check the back side of the IC to see whether the BGA or the ball grid are in position. If the ball grids are not clear, if they have ruptured off, 
you may want to use the reballing process to ensure that we do the reballing of the IC. So behind the ICs, you will use this entire plate on top and create those ball grid arrays at the back of the ICs and replace them back on the PCB. So this is the process of reballing. We have tried to understand a little bit about the tools and equipments that are required for reballing in the IC. Going forward in the next video, we will try and do reballing of one of the ICs and help you understand how you can do reballing at your own workshop. Thank you very much.